Welcome to Online WHS Tutorials. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the Online WHS system as an employee permission level. As a worker with the employee permission level, when you first log into the system, you will see the site icon page. Items in these registers on this page have been filtered only the sites that you have been related to, plus what is called the global site. The global site is usually your company's name. Anything related to the global site is seen by all employees in every site. On the site icon page, you will see quick links to popular used forms, plus your site registers. You will also be able to select your to-do list and see what has been assigned to you for you to complete. To complete a to-do item, just select on the do it icon to be taken directly to the action or item that needs to be completed. You do not have to be scared of the system, as the system has a step-by-step -step guide for basically every process in the system. For an example, you can select how to log a hazard. For the system to take you through a step-by-step -step process on what to do and how to do it. Now that's easy. If an induction is assigned to you, it should be in your to-do list. But any induction assigned to you will also be in your My Induction Register. Just select on the inductions assigned and complete the entire induction. You cannot come back to the induction if you are halfway through. You must complete the entire induction. Make sure to use the signature box after you complete the induction. If you have failed the induction, you may see a button called Redo. Select this and undertake the induction again. But it's a good idea before you do is to select this link to see which answers were incorrect. If multiple attempts has not been selected or you have used all your attempts, the induction will not be seen in your list and management will need to reassign the induction. Now let's have a look at how to enter an incident. When entering an incident, select on the incident form. Your permission level doesn't allow you to see the incident register for privacy reasons. Complete the form. Any field highlighted with a red asterisk means that this is a mandatory field and must be completed. It is very important when completing the incident form that not only do you put as much information as you can, but also the information is accurate. Firstly, select the type of person injured. If the person is not an employee, then select the category. Contractors listed a contract is in your company's contractor register. If the person injured is not on your list, then enter the person in as a visitor which when selected will open up a pop-up box that you can complete. Please remember the red asterisk fields must be completed and put as much information as you can into this form. Once you've selected the category or entered the person into the system, it's time to complete the rest of the form. Select the site of the incident, then select the incident type from the drop-down list. Certain incident types selected will open up a more detailed form at the bottom of this page. When selecting the reported date and time, please make sure to enter the correct date and time as it is very important. You can also relate the incident to an activity that the person was undertaking, or leave this blank if it's not on the list. Again, you can actually relate an incident to a machine if it was being used by the person at the time of the incident. The location of the incident is exactly where the incident occurred. As much detail as possible is best. And this is also in regards to the location information. So the incident was in the warehouse, on the stairs, but in the location information you may want to put something that was wrong with the stairs. For an example, the stairs were wet which caused the person to slip down the stairs. Complete the form with the details of what happened next. Was first aid involved? Was medical treatment needed? Did they go to hospital? And if so, was it by ambulance? Make sure to answer these questions and also to enter the detail of who provided first aid or medical treatment and which hospital they went to. So gradually work your way through the form 
and answer the relevant questions. Then select save and proceed. This will take you to the nature of injury plus the body part page. Select the nature of injury and then select any body parts. If there was no injury and no body parts, just select no injury. You can also select the mechanism and breakdown fields if you know them. Make sure to select submit and try not to double click. Once completed, you'll be taken back to the site icon page. So let's go over some other register functions and try to, say for an example, obtain a safe work method statement from your activities register. When you select a register, and basically any other register in the system, as an employee permission level, you will see items that have been related solely to your site or those to the global site above you. Each register will consist of four major buttons. The view icon. This is where data that has been entered into the system can be viewed. In the view section as well, you'll also be able to see the items logs, which consist of documents that might have been uploaded, as well as other items such as checklists being completed or it might be maintenance dates and so forth. It's the history of this item in the system. When an activity is entered in the system, it creates a QR code. These QR codes can be scanned and will take you straight to this view page. So you can either log into the system to obtain your document or scan a QR code that might be placed around your facility or in your vehicles or wherever it may be. And once you scan it, it will actually take you directly to this page, the view page of that item. The second button you will see is an upload signed document button. This is where you can upload signed documents that you may have completed or other document your manager has asked you to upload. If you are uploading a scanned document, make sure that you reopen that document and save it as a true PDF and then upload it. The next button will be either purple or grey. If this icon is purple, then it means that a document has been related to this item and by selecting this icon, the document can be downloaded. If the icon is grey, then this item does not have a document relating to it. On all registers, it will actually highlight an item ID. This is the item's ID in your database, and it is auto-developed. It also is the ID sent on an email alert if created for this item, so you can identify which item may be due for review, for an example. You will see the item name plus the site it's related to. But remember, you'll only see items in your register that relate to your site or the global site. The yellow icon next to a date highlights the item needs attention as either a review date has been reached or maintenance is needed. Only management on your admin permission level can change this. So if you do see this, make sure you check with your supervisor or manager. The last button is the status button. As an employee, you cannot actually delete or deactivate any item in your system. Okay, let's go back to the site icon page. As mentioned before, if you need to know how to do something, check in the WHS helper first. Other important buttons on your site icon page is your history page. By selecting this, you can see inductions, checklists, and all other things that you might have completed or been involved in. For an example, incidents. You will also see your qualifications and expiry dates. These dates will also highlight in your to-do list. Select back to go back to the site icon page. The My Links is a feature which will be coming soon. In the My Information section, you will see two links. The first link is your profile. Here you can change your username and password for privacy reasons. So when you first log into the system, it's a good idea to go to this link and update your password. A management or admin permission level can see your username, but they cannot see your password, especially if you've updated it here. Make sure 
if you have updated your profile, that you select the Update Profile button to make sure that it's saved in the database. The Communication button, again, is a future upgrade, which will help your managers and admin users communicate important messages to you. You can also access your profile and your to-do list via this section here. This is where you log out of the system as well. The online WHS system is mobile responsive. So to use the system via your mobile phone, what you need to do is open up our website on your phone, www.whssystems.com.au. Once you have done that, select the login button. Now before entering your username and password, save this web page to your phone's home screen. Once you have done that, log into the system using your username and password. When you log into the system, you will see the same icon page, but in a mobile friendly way. The system has QR code features, where items such as checklist, incident and hazard forms can be completed just by scanning a QR code. And if management have made this QR code public, you won't even have to enter a username or password. So the best thing to do is download a QR code reader not a scanner, a QR code reader. There are many different types of QR code readers to choose from. When you scan the QR code, it should open up the checklist or form directly on your mobile phone. Some QR code readers may only open up the URL for then for you to select. So try to find one that opens up the form directly. If a QR code is scanned and you are taken to the login page, that means management has not made this QR code public. Therefore, you will have to log in using your username and password. Well, I hope that helps you understand the basic fundamentals of how to use online WHS as an employee permission level. If you need any help, there is a help section up here where you can actually log a question and we'll get back to you.